Okay, feeling great. Okay, cool. Maybe everybody else is asleep. <laughs> I saw a feeling great, so at least one person's feeling great. I don't know where everybody else is, but let's continue. All right, acquisition of location information. This is 1692B. All right, so any debt collector, remember any, remember the power of that word any, no restriction. Any debt collector communicating with any person other than the consumer, so not you, for the purpose of acquiring location information about the consumer. So what is that saying? It's basically saying that if a debt collector is trying to get your location from somebody that is not you, what's an example of somebody that's not you? The most obvious example of somebody that is not you is like a family member, friend, whatever. But don't sleep on the fact that somebody that is not you is communicating with you indirectly. So if, they're, so if they send a letter to you, right? It might seem like they're communicating with you, but they're communicating with you indirectly. So that's what Congress is saying. They're communicating with you, but they're not directly communicating with you. So that classifies as any other you know, person that they're talking about. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind. You got to read between the lines sometimes. It says that, um, when they're doing that about the consumer, they shall. So shall means that they have to do it. They shall, number one, identify himself or her, themselves state that they are confirming or correcting location information concerning the consumer and only if expressly requested, identify the employer. So basically, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. They just got to identify themselves, et cetera. Number two, this is 1692B number two. This is one of my favorites that you guys can use as a violation. Not state that such consumer owes any debt. So it's a violation for them to say that you owe a debt to somebody else. But remember, Somebody else could be them mailing you a letter because that's not directly you. That's indirectly you. Have you ever received a letter that said this is an attempt to collect a debt? It has your name in all caps. So that's a violation. 15 USC 1692 B number two. That's a violation of that. You need to write that down. Write it down uh, as an exhibit on that letter. Make a copy of it and, you know, send it out with your paperwork. So number three says not communicate with any such person more than once unless requested to do so by such person or unless a debt collector reasonably believes that the earlier response of such person is erroneous or incomplete and that such person now has correct or complete location information. So the main part I want y'all to focus on is not communicate with any such person more than once. Remember, think about the communication other than you as them send you a letter. So they're not supposed to communicate with you more than once unless you request them to, and you never request them to. So it looks like 1692B number three is a violation as well. We already found $2,000 worth of violations. If we want to go with number one, we found $3,000 worth of uh, violations. Number four says not communicate by postcard. So a while ago, debt collectors used to communicate by postcard, but they don't as much anymore. But um, yeah, so you can skip that section unless you get communicated with by postcard. So this one, number five, everybody has this violation. Not use any language or symbol on any envelope or in the contents of any communication affected by the mails or telegram that indicates that the debt collector is in the debt collection business or that the communication relates to the collection of a debt. So basically, 15 USC 1692B number five is saying that if they use any language on a letter, what is any language on a letter? Literally typing anything, that's a violation. So you already got, you know, are we at $4,000, $5,000 worth of violations yet? If they use a symbol, a symbol is our logo. If, Chase, if you see a Chase logo on something, circle that. That's an exhibit. That's a violation of 15 USC 1692B number five. So that's like, what, $6,000? We're only in 1692B. We haven't even gone through all, all the sections. So you got to really understand that they are really committing a lot of violations. You want to really write them down, make copies. And um, at the end of the day, identifying the violations aren't too hard. It's just about structuring your argument and going to, to get your desired result and your remedy. But we're going to dive into that. All right, number six. So it basically says, um, after the debt collector knows the consumer is represented by an attorney with regard to the subject debt and has knowledge of or can readily ascertain such attorney's name and address, not communicate with any person other than that attorney unless the attorney fails to respond within a reasonable period of time to communication from the debt collector. So 15 USC 1692B number six is just basically saying if you have an attorney, they're not supposed to communicate with you. Um, to be honest, we're going to dive deeper later and we're going to talk about you representing yourself, which is a pro se litigant. So I wouldn't focus too much on that violation, but if you have an attorney, then, you know, if they communicate with you, that's an extra thousand dollars. Any uh, questions? I said any. <laughs> any questions on 1692B? Let me know, let me know. 
Are we going to move forward if y'all have questions later on?